Today, and for the first chapter, we're going to talk about the first part of the, um, the course talks about blood, and the, really we're doing the cardiovascular system. And we're going to start with blood, okay? Blood is the material that transports things throughout the body, right? That is its biggest function, okay? Blood is a, what type of tissue? Connective, Connective tissue, right? Right here, connective tissue. What other types of Connective tissue, did you learn about last semester? Oh, I thought we didn't have to learn anything. We're new, new professor. No. Uh, yes, you do. What other connected types of connective tissue did you learn about last semester? Give me an example. Oh. Okay, connective tissue proper. And <laughs> what, uh, what, give me an example of a connective tissue proper or other connective tissue. Bone, what else? Lymph. Skin. Not lymph, lymph's a fluid. Brianna? <laughs> okay, just follow along for now. You'll have, we'll, I'll, I'll go over how to type in it a, a, a next class, okay? So, what other types of connective tissue? Bone, Emma? Tendons, Tendons ligaments, right? All of those, cartilage, right? elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage, hyaline cartilage, all of those are, are solid or semi-solid. Blood is the only fluid tissue, okay? It's the only fluid tissue. And what's the definition of a tissue? A group of cells that perform a similar function. So groups of cells, either similar cells or various types of cells, that are grouped together to perform functions, a group of functions or similar functions, okay? So blood, it's important, it's important function is transportation, okay? It's gonna transport gases such as what? Hmm? Oxygen, what else? Carbon dioxide. Nutrients, right? Give me an example of nutrients that pass through the blood. Hmm? Minerals. Minerals? Yes. Okay. What else? I'm, I got one in my in particular. Glucose. Glucose. Blood. You've heard blood sugar, right? Glucose. Waste, and you could classify CO two as a waste in there. Hormones. Estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, right? Thyroid hormone, okay? Insulin is a hormone, right? The, all those hormones you went over at the end of last semester in endocrine system, they're all transported through the blood, okay? And how does that happen? It happens as blood travels through blood vessels, arteries, veins, right? Arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins, and back to and from the what pushes blood through the body? The heart, okay? So that's really the, the outline of your cardiovascular system, and we're gonna get into a lot of specifics with it, but the blood travels via those vessels, okay? And the way I like to, I like to have a little analogy, all right? So how many of you live from out, out of state and within driving distance, okay? How did you get here? Drove. Drove is the obvious answer. What route, let me rephrase the question. What route did you take, did you drive to get here? 95. 95. What else? George Washington Bridge. George Washington Bridge on 95, 84, right? 84, 95, 91. What are those all, what are all those things? There. Highways, okay? So you have this highway, let's say this is 91, and then it connects down here to 95, and off of 91 over here there's 84, right? Are those rather large highways? Yeah, there are. And then off of those you have some smaller roads, right? Well, right, let's say that's Route 10 that comes down through 
Cheshire. Cheshire. Okay, and there's a bunch of other roads off of that. There's, there's uh, say, Route 70 and so on. Okay, those are smaller roads, right? And what travels on those roads? Cars, okay? How many of you love to buy stuff from Amazon? Yeah, you do, right? How does Amazon ship their stuff? Through trucks, trucks FedEx, right? The analogy here is, why am I talking about this? The analogy here is arteries and veins are your highways, okay? Arteries, veins are your highways, and you have a bunch of smaller roads also. And then eventually you get down to your road that, that your, your house is on at home where you live, right? And it's a little side street, you know, sometimes there's a little cul-de-sac, and here's your house, right? Yay. And so you've blood or the cars that we're talking about with the FedEx trucks, they travel along these highways, arteries and veins, and eventually get down to the capillaries, these smaller, smaller roads, eventually to your house and exchange material. Then they go back, okay? So the blood is the cars and everything else that's on the highway. The arteries and veins are your highways. And your capillaries are your smaller roads where you can get off and go park at home. Okay? And I, I ask about the trucks because red blood cells, they carry a lot of this stuff. Gases, nutrients, waste. Right? They're your FedEx trucks. They're going to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide and deliver it to cells. Okay? They're going to deliver it where it needs to go. Okay? Questions on that stuff? Okay? And the other stuff, glucose, insulin, hormones, they're the other cars that are on the highway with you. Okay? So, the blood is composed of two things. Formed elements and plasma. Okay? Formed elements and plasma. The formed elements include what? So blood is a fluid tissue, right? Which means it's composed of cells floating in fluid. The formed elements are your cells. And they include what? Blood cells. So we have red blood cells. I'll just put RBCs for now. What else? White blood cells. White blood cells. Okay. And then we have this other stuff that is fragments of cells, right? Parts of cells, what we call platelets. Okay, platelets. So those all together are your formed elements. All right, and they represent roughly 44% of the volume of blood. Okay, and then plasma ends up being roughly 55%. Actually, this is like, this is like 45%, okay? And the red blood cells are like 44% of the total, okay? And so now the white blood cells and et cetera make up about 1% of the total. So all of the formed elements together are about 45%, okay? So what you have, there are your formed elements. The scientific word or the scientific name for red blood cells are erythrocytes. Erythrocytes, right? Those are your red blood cells. And what do they look like? What do red blood cells look like? Imagine if you will, going in the morning, grabbing your Dunkin' coffee, and you feel, feel like, feel like a little, like a donut. I feel like a donut. My favorite kind of donut is Boston cream. Okay? Boston cream donut, which has that nice, creamy, yummy, sugary filling on the inside, right? So imagine a donut, right? And I'm, so side view donut, like this, right? I'm looking at it from the side. And what would happen if I pushed in the sides of that Boston cream donut? So it ended up looking like this. 
What's going to happen to what's inside that donut? It's going to come out. Okay? That's basically what a red blood cell is. It is a, what we call a biconcave disc. Right? So a red blood cell looks like this. It has two concave parts. Right? So then when you draw it, it kind of looks like something like this. Right? It has this little disc-like structure to it. It looks like a pushed-in donut. Okay? And so, when you push in the sides of the donut or the red blood cell, some stuff gets shot out. What is not present in red blood cells? What's the biggest thing that's inside a regular cell? And the DNA is found in the nucleus. Red blood cells don't have a nucleus. Okay? So they, they are a nucleate. A nucleated. For all intents and purposes, red blood cells are cellular bags of hemoglobin. Okay? They are structured to do their job, which is to transport and move oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay? So oxygen will bind. Hemoglobin, we'll talk about this as we go through the erythrocytes in, in, in particular, in detail, right? Oxygen will bind hemoglobin, and then it will be transported to where it needs to go, right? And then there's on-off, the whole uh, diffusion that occurs, all right, to move the gases to and from the cells into the lungs as it's necessary, okay? So, the other formed elements include leukocytes. Those are your white blood cells, and there are five types of white blood cells, right? Neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Okay, we'll go over those as well uh, in the next couple, probably on Wednesday. All right, and then platelets are cellular fragments. They're also called thrombocytes. Another word for platelets is thrombocytes. Okay? <clears throat> they are cellular fragments. They result from cells breaking up and then uh, basically like exploding and then those little bits are, are held on and they stay within the blood. All right, and then plasma is your fluid for portion of blood. All right, so what's this thing that's over here on the right? Anyone know? How do I, how do you get that? So ideal, originally this tube started looking like this. Okay. That's what that's what it started like. Regular blood. And then what I did was I centrifuged it. And it ended up looking like this. Why? What's at the bottom of this tube? What's at the bottom here? Red blood cells. Why did the red blood cells sink to the bottom? Hmm? Heavier. They're heavier. So what's all this stuff? Plasma. Okay? So the plasma is up top. The red blood cells are at the bottom. So this right here is your plasma. Down here is your red blood cells. And in the middle there, that's what we call the buffy coat. And you'll see this on the next, on the next slide. Okay? Buffy coat. That's the white blood cells that are present in a blood sample. So when you go to the doctor and you get blood taken, they put it in those tubes, this is what they're going to do with it eventually. All right? This is what you're going to do in lab this week. Okay? You're going to take a capillary tube, a very small, thin tube, take a sample of blood, fake or synthetic blood, 
run it through the capillary tube, and you're going to spin it down, and you're going to look at this. And doctors use this as a great diagnostic, like, diagnostic tool. If you have not enough of the normal proportions of plasma to blood cells, that's indicative of something that's wrong. If you have too much, too, a lot of white blood cells, that could mean you either have an infection, you're trying to fight something off systemically, or if you're in, in pretty good health, it could be, mean you have the first signs of leukemia, okay, as an example, okay? Blood smears, and this is another thing you're going to do in lab. What we've done here is this, take, okay? This is a blood smear, taking a very small portion of blood, a drop of blood on a microscope slide, and I smear it along the, the slide to kind of separate out the cells and I look at it underneath the microscope and I can see the different parts, the different cells that make up a blood sample. What are all the red things? Red blood cells. Red blood cells. And see, see the little holes in the middle? They kind of look like donuts. That, they, you see why I come up with this stuff? You'll never forget that now. You'll be thinking about pushed in Boston cream donuts next time you go to Dunkin' Donuts, I promise you. Okay, so those are all your erythrocytes. Okay, these things. The neutrophils are the, are the most prominent, and most numerous white blood cells that are out there. So both of these are right here are neutrophils. Okay, and then you can see there's actually these little dots that are present throughout the sample, the little purple dots. Okay, the little purple dots, those are your platelets. Okay, see they don't really, rec they don't really resemble cells. Actually, let's erase that. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's erase all this and put it in a different color so that you know um, what's what. So here's platelets. Okay. Okay, but they are they're, they're cellular fragments resulting from cells breaking down and they're used for clotting, right? For hemostasis as we go through, okay? So to now, up to now, what's, tell me one function of blood. Which one have we talked about mostly? Transportation. Transportation. All right, that's one. Someone else over here said clotting. Yes, that's another function of blood. Oh, I so we can break it down into like this. We can break it into three different categories. F blood fu functions in transportation of nutrients, gases, wastes, etc. So I can give me an example. Oxygen to the body cells, right? carbon dioxide to the lungs, to and from the lungs, et cetera, okay? No, they also transport hormones and nutrients and weights, okay? In a way, it also transports heat. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? And then there's this category of protection. Much of your immune system is housed in the blood. That's what those leukocytes are there for, right? So neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, right, and monocytes, they all help to monitor, make sure there's no uh, disease or infections that are present in the blood. And if they are, they recognize it and hopefully remove it, right, when it's, when it's present, especially against specific pathogens, bacteria, viruses, and so on, okay? And then platelets also Clotting is a protective function. So platelets, along with proteins that are solubilized or in a soluble form in the plasma, are present and ready to be enacted when there's a broken blood vessel. All right, so when, when clotting needs to occur to protect from a loss of blood. Okay? And then the other third group of functions, one out, I guess I did. 
really is a, regula a regulation of body conditions. Okay? So, they help maintain homeostasis by blood works by transporting heat and helps maintain and regulate body temperature. What's your normal body temperature? 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? 20, uh, whatever, 37 degrees Celsius, okay? Body temperature. So when you get too warm, what happens? You start to sweat, right? And what happens to your, you know, like if I had to go through a cardio workout right now, up and down the stairs for the next 20 minutes, what's my face gonna look like? Red. Red. Why? It's cooling your blood, and so those little vessels in your face and at your skin have opened, and they allow blood to go to the skin so that the sweat that's on your skin can help dissipate heat to the environment, okay? That is regulating your body temperature. Conversely, you get too cold, go outside, play in the snow with your hands, you know, playing a snowball fight with no gloves on. What do your hands look like when you're done while you're still out there? They turn white. Those blood capillaries have constricted and they're now rerouting blood away from your extremities because we don't want to lose body heat to the environment. We're helping to conserve body heat, okay? They all, blood also regulates body pH, okay? Body pH. Blood absorbs acids and bases from the environment, okay? So still doing this cardio workout, what happens to my restoration rate? It increases. What, what happens to my muscles if I, if I sprint too fast, I do 50 wind sprints, what's gonna happen? The muscle's gonna start to feel how? Hmm? Fatigue, and they're gonna start to burn, right? That's a result of, and, and an increase in acetic acid, okay, in your muscles. Your muscles are working to break down glucose to let you do the, the work you need to do, and in response, they are producing byproducts, right? And wind sprints going fast, you can't get enough oxygen in for as much as the work your muscles wanna do, so now they don't go through uh, the electron transport system through cellular respiration. Instead, they're breaking down glucose and making acetic acid. And that acetic acid builds up, and now you have to get rid of it, right? And your blood pH goes up, okay, or goes down. It changes from normal. And now your respiration rate has to work to get rid of all of that stuff. And you're trying to get oxygen in to your lungs, transport to the blood, to the muscles, so that it continue to do the work that it wants to do, all right? There's a lot of stuff going on there, okay? But it helps maintain pH. Body pH is, blood pH is about 7.35 to 7.45. It gets below 7.35, right? That's what we call acidosis, okay? If it gets above 7.45, that's what we call alkalosis, okay? That is not a good state to be in, either one of them, okay? A lot of your body functions don't like that. They like to be in that 7.35, 7.45 range, okay? Your proteins in your body like that. They don't like up too low or too high. So all of your body systems work together to help to relieve that. So if you go, if you go into uh, ketoacidosis, right, which can be a result of, you know, a, a high strenuous uh, workout activity or increased activity, or, or breakdown of fat, however you want to do it, you want to talk about it, your respiration rate goes up because it's trying to get rid of that carbon dioxide and help bring blood pH back up to 7.4. Right, so this kind of, there's a, there's, a, there's a connection between those systems, especially a very quick, very intimate connection between the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system, especially in, these, in maintaining these body functions along with fluid balance. Fluid balance, right? Water is added to the blood from the GI tract. I see a bunch of water bottles everywhere, right? You walk around, you drink a bunch of water. It gets into 
the body, it's taken it up from the GI tract and goes into the blood that increases blood volume. And you get too much, your kidneys are gonna get rid of it. So what happens when you drink a lot of water? What do you end up doing, Olivia? You pee a lot. You gotta get rid of that excess water, okay? So those two systems work together. All right, so we'll pick up uh, there tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday, Socrative, connect, figure out how to type on those PDFs, okay? See you on Wednesday. Have a good rest of your day. You'd post that before the lecture, like I could put them out if I wanted to. Yes.